This is a follow-up to my video on the Scantegrity switchboard. Please watch that video first. I wanted to talk about a feature that I previously glossed over for the sake of brevity. The pre-election audit is an additional safeguard, but not essential to the switchboard operation. It is described in the 2008 Scantegrity paper and was used in Tacoma Park in 2009 and 2011. It enables the election authority to verify the integrity properties of the backend and to prove those properties to observers. Those properties include that there are no pointer collisions, that corresponding QNS table entries refer to the same question, that all options within the same issue on the same physical ballot correspond to the same virtual ballot, and that the randomized confirmation codes and permutations appear truly random. It would be bad if, for example, C9 were a valid confirmation code for the first question of every ballot whose serial number is divisible by eight. These are all things that, in theory, are verified by the ballot spoiled during the election. However, we might want to guard against the case that not many ballots actually get spoiled. And we also want an opportunity to detect and correct any errors that might have crept in before they have a chance to ruin the actual election. In case every registered voter both votes and spoils a ballot, the number of actual physical ballots needs to be about two times the number of registered voters. Printing too many ballots is wasteful, but printing too few is catastrophic. In reality, turnout will be less than 100%, and most voters probably won't choose to spoil a ballot. But if you did have to tell the last several voters that they're not allowed to spoil a ballot because you don't have enough left, then it would be reasonable for those voters to suspect cheating. Also, remember that some ballots will be spoiled by voters unintentionally. In order to carry out a pre-election audit, we need roughly double that number of ballots represented in the switchboard backend, or about four times the number of registered voters. After the backend is committed, but before the physical ballots are printed, we collect unpredictable, verifiable data from the real world. This is similar to how we generate the pseudo-random number that determines which side of each R table to reveal. We use the digest of that data as the seed for a pseudo-random number generator that determines which of the ballots represented in the backend to print, the actual ballots, and which to audit, the imaginary ballots. In order for the election authority to conceal corrupt data where it will not be audited, it would have to predict the unpredictable data with extreme precision. If, for example, the specified data set is the opening and closing prices for five different stocks on a given day, and each price has 30 plausible values, then there are more than 500 trillion plausible outcomes, each of which corresponds to a completely different sampling of ballots. So even if the election authority wanted to hide corrupt data where it would be unlikely to be found, that's completely infeasible. On the other hand, if there are only a few erroneous items, then it's possible that they will escape detection by pure chance, but that's almost never enough to ruin an entire election. Then all of the imaginary ballots are spoiled and never printed. All of the corresponding Q pointers and S pointers are revealed. All of the corresponding confirmation codes are also revealed. This serves as a zero knowledge proof of the integrity properties listed earlier. Anyone can then examine the revealed items to verify those properties without exposing any secret information. That's about all there is to it. See the links in the description for more information. Leave a comment, or you can tweet at me, at Steele's Dad. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a great day.